Okay, this is the Wayne um, Finance Committee. Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, one sec, let me just. Okay, this is Okay, are we all set? Okay, it is, it is six o'clock, and this is the beginning of the Wigley Finance Committee meeting. Tonight's meeting um, has four major points on the agenda. Um, first, um, regarding the minutes from the last meeting, I'm sure everyone's had an opportunity to read them. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to accept the minutes of the last meeting. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Second piece on this is to consider a request to transfer funds from the reserve fund to pay for the unanticipated costs to repair the septic system at the police station. Brian, you want to sure. give us an overview of that? Sure. It's my introductory, <laughs> introductory music. Um, everybody's going to have a theme song pretty soon. <laughs> um, so they noticed issues with, with their septic probably two or three months ago. Um, things are getting backed up. And the pipe that's under the building now is original to the building. Um, so it's really old. Um, they had a lumber comp and they put a cam down there and um, they found a blockage and um, they removed the blockage. And when they were further investigating the pipe, they noticed that there was dirt inside the pipe, gravel inside the pipe. Um, so they cleared it out and uh, there was some water, sort of standing water in the pipe. Um, they cleaned it out and then they were gonna try to make it work because things seemed to be going in then. Uh, I clogged the second time, I sent the camera back down and it was even more obvious that the pipe had essentially caved in. Um, so um, Jim doesn't budget um, for you know, this amount of money. The total project cost is the bid that we had was uh, around forty six thousand um, dollars to replace the pipe. That's you know cutting on concrete, replacing the pipe. Insurance, mm -hmm. um, we're able to file an insurance claim, and they will pay for um, all work that essentially everything's everything except the pipe essentially. So any damage that we do to the building um, to fix it and then put it back, the insurance company is going to cover. Um, so we're on the hook for, um, and I included the email, uh, and we have to pay the deductible, obviously. Um, so they're looking for a reserve fund transfer of about $6,500. Currently, the reserve fund has $20,000 in it, um, and we haven't had to use it yet. Okay. Looking at the looking at the budgets and how the year is going, I, we may have some minor things that may you know, minor budgets that may commit, smaller budgets that may commit. Sure. At the end of the year, but I don't see anything uh, big at this point. Okay. This is just a reserve fund transfer. Yep. And that's it. We'll sign that. Yep. Okay. Um, any, any questions about this? Um, any concerns? I don't have any concerns, but uh, just is this a reserve fund for the police department? Or? This is, or is it the reserve, the general fund? reserve fund. Um, right. So it's a general reserve fund for the town. Towns can create reserve funds that um, money can be spent at the discretion of the finance committee. So the, the this committee has, as long as I've been here, appropriate twenty thousand dollars in the budget. Any budget, any budget that's remaining in the reserve fund at the end of the fiscal year just turns over into cash. Thanks. That we use. We put the project out to bid, um, and we're just waiting for the select board to sign the contract and for the reserve fund transfer to be signed. And they're going to start probably within a week. Mm -hmm. Does make you wonder. The building's pretty old, so it just makes you wonder yeah. how much money you throw at it. How much money do you keep throwing at a building before you 
It's all similar. Yeah. 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 How old is that building? Oh, it's a community center, right? Yeah. Oh, gosh. It's, um, well, it's, and how, when, when was that community center put up? It's, I know it's been there for 40 years. That was, uh, old Jim LaSalle put that up as the, uh, like a right place for the kids. I don't know how long ago it was. Long back ago. I think it was the 60s. It was, I was going to say 70s because I was having to read select board minutes, looking for something completely different yeah. recently. And I said to Lynn, What is this team center? I've never heard of it. You know? uh, is it late 60s, yeah. early 70s? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. That's it. Okay, good. Let's get on to uh, item three, review, discuss, and vote on the FY23 operating budgets, capital projects, and all of the miscellaneous items for funding at the upcoming annual town meeting. So essentially, we will take the operating budget first. We'll go through the operating budget by department, um, just to make sure we're all on the same page. Now, We've had a chance to discuss this, you know, the department heads have come in, we've talked about it, we've kicked it around. So um, we will essentially take it by, by department, as I said, and we will have a vote by department. And let's just um, put it that way. And then after that, we'll get to the, uh, um, the other parts, cap the capital and the miscellaneous. So we'll start with the general government. And the general government at this point, uh, for the new year, we have a, uh, a $16,273 $16, increase, which is 3.2%. And you can see everything, up. we're not gonna go line by line, we'll be here for three days. Um, but you can see what's in there. And we've had a chance and we can see um, the line items out of, um, we have been reduced and those that have increased. And we can also see to the far right uh, those dollars that um, that will be absorbed by the enterprise fund in each of those general government line items. Any questions, any thoughts? Now, <coughs> before we continue, Keeping in mind that at the end of the day here, the tax rate for the given budget, as we see it right here, is 2.51% increase, and the, the levy will be increased by 5.33. Um, much of that obviously is due to <clears throat> Frontier, Wayland Elementary School. <clears throat> but in the past, we have made adjustments at this point in time in the meeting which 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 reflect on the the rate um, and the increase. So um, keep that in mind. We have any questions about general government? I have no, no. I have no questions. Okay. So um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 This is not a motion that we need to put on the floor, is it, Brian? Um, you can you, maybe you just want to do it all at the end. Just want to right. Okay. One big motion at right. the end. Okay. Okay. So next we have the cultural recreation services, and we have a, um, a dollar change of twenty one thousand two hundred sixty one dollars for an increase of fifteen point six five percent. Um, and we can look and see specifically where those increases are coming from. Um,
I just want, can I just add something? Sure. I was told today that Sunderland um, is not interested in joining Tricon Beach. Okay. And that was the number that was given to us. Okay. Assuming that they were not. Okay. And my understanding is that, is that it's a no for now. It's a no um, for now. Um, we have obviously our total view for cultural recreation service $157,095 with a $21,000 increase. Um, and the largest chunk of that coming increase wise, um, that's coming from the South County Senior Center and the, the Rec Commission. Um, we've gone through it all. Any objections to these numbers? No objection. No objection. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Public health. We have a um, a new operating budget of ninety four thousand. Where are we? Okay, ninety four thousand eight hundred seventeen dollars. A change of nine hundred seventeen dollars for an increase of 098 percent. Uh, so Board of Health, a solid waste has this waste, um, and as you can see, everything combined. Um, questions, thoughts about public health? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll just add that we are now getting paid for our recyclables again, which is nice. Or there was a, a the period there where we thought we were going to have to pay for recycling when the yeah. markets collapsed. Well, they, the domestic markets have come back, and now I think we're some of the range. Well, that's a nice change. $21 a ton or sure. something. That's what? I think it's like 20, the latest month was 21 something a ton, I think. Okay. Next on to public safety. A public safety total operating budget, $428,296 for an increase of $22,535 for a 5.55% increase. This is obviously fire department, ambulance, police, animal control, um, inspection services, etc. Questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, move on to the public works. Public works has a total budget four hundred twenty-nine thousand seven hundred sixty-five dollars. Uh, Twenty-one thousand sixty-five is the increase at five point one five percent. Obviously, it's highway, general highway, winter, winter roads, garage maintenance, etc. So it keeps the place humming. Questions, thoughts, objections? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And we have insurance and benefits. Um, and insurance and benefits this year, we have $805,731 for an increase of 3,465.43% held relatively stable. Um, and as we can see, this is everything, group health, Medicare, retirement systems, et cetera. Um, questions? All those in favor? Uh, Brian, could you get that? Got to figure out which computer controls and what now. Screen is great. I don't even need my glasses. Oh, I don't want it. Okay. Okay, here we have the unclassifieds. And in the unclassified section, as you can see, we have loan interest, reserve fund, regional, Franklin Regional Council of Governments, vehicle fuel, etc. $74,260 for an increase of $2,807 or a 3.93% increase. And um, that's pretty self explanatory. Any questions on the unclassifieds? Very good. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Schools. All right, schools, we'll take these um, one at a time. 
we have Waitley Elementary School. Waitley Elementary School operating budget, excuse me, is $1,888,684 for an increase of $53,898 or 3.22%. Frontier region, $1,048,782, an increase of $131,967 or 14.39. Franklin County Technical School is $230,000, $230,145, Increased 31,276, 15.73% increase. Smith Vogue has no charges on budget. And those are our schools. So our schools totaled out 3,167,611 dollars for 7.54% increase. As you can see, they are the majority of the budget that we have in this town. It's the least we can do, at least I have any of the Any questions or thoughts about um, schools? Whitney Frontier, Frank, Franklin Tech. I, I know that we, we had a, a, num a number of meetings concerning these numbers and um, this is what we have. No questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> and last but not least, um, we have our debt, which long-term debt, we don't have any at this point. Our short-term debt, we have our excavator lease purchase and the wood Tripper lease purchase, which comes out to $48,660. That's what's left on the lease. So our total operating budget for the town um, there it is. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Five million seven hundred thirty-one thousand one hundred thirty-four dollars for an increase of three hundred ten thousand four hundred sixty-four, or a five point seven three percent increase over last year. Is there anything after this, right? Or is this the? Uh... This is after the for the down operating budget. The whole oh, okay. of the enterprise fund. So we can look at that. So we can... Okay. Um, we vote on this. Yeah, I think that's okay. Yes. Um, go ahead. Somebody make a motion. I move that we accept the um, fiscal year 2023 operating budget as presented. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Give me one second. I'll pull up the okay. press one. Which is set by the obviously set by the, or re recommended by the water commissioners, but the finance committee also considered recommendation. All right, so here is the Enterprise Fund Water Department budget. Uh, it's quoted on the, at a separate uh, article on the warrant. So separate them out. That's how they're voted on. So, okay, this is revenue. So their anticipated revenue is more $28,000. Um, let me get to the 
So water department salaries, $62,662. Water department operations, $291,911. Water department overhead expenses, $51,450. Um, water department operations are extremely high uh, because, because the water merger project is not finished yet. Mm -hmm. And because there's, um, they're still waiting to collect the local fees. We need to show that the water department is appropriating that revenue for them to be able to pay off the loan in the same fiscal year. So it may look like it's better to it's better to assume a subtract the two hundred thousand from that if you want to compare it to previous years' um, operating budgets. Okay. So so for um, twenty three, you know, minus one thousand and ninety one thousand nine eleven compared to. 19, which was 82,100. Overhead expenses. So overhead expenses are, because the water department operates as an enterprise fund, any of the services that town staff provide to the water department- It's charged. Um, it's charged to the, um, the water department at a certain percentage, um, depending on the position. Okay. So- Did you say the revenue was on you? Yep. That's the last sheet here. It's overhead. So this is projected revenue. The projected increase in your income does that um, is that in anticipation of the town center perhaps that's my understanding yeah and that assumes that all hookups will be paid yeah. there's they're they're assuming there'll be 40 cups in the center of town is what they're projecting and then they always assume that there's they, i think they average about excuse me, four or five a year, other hookups. I think there are 45 connections and five are town buildings. Yep. And um, what is in the way of that whole process come, coming to a close? Um, nothing at this point. Um, they stopped for winter. I think I've heard that they have the foundation dug. Um, they have the water main piping that they need to come out of the ground in place. And I was told that they're going to pour the footings uh, for the next day or two. Um, so um, maybe a couple months is, I think, when they would have it very far along in the process. The actual structure of the order, what they need to build it. Yeah, we actually have the, we have all the, the skin yeah, unit and the pumps, we already have those in storage. Mm -hmm. They bought those early on, yeah. um, which was a really smart move because I think they would be difficult to get right now. Yeah. It would be a longer lead time. Mm -hmm. One of the things I think that's going to take a while is a generator. Um, there's a pipe there that they were worried about. There's like a six to eight month lead time, I think, on generators right now. So, but we thought that may hold us up because Mass DEP wants DACA power at pumping, uh, pumping stations like this. But I think uh, we have a mobile generator that I think they'll be okay with as long as we, yeah. as long as we promise to bring it over there when the power goes off. Right. The communication from Wayne to the um, residents of the water district, which was several months ago, predicted September 1st. September 1st? Yeah. Should be wrap, wrapped up. Well, that's when he wants our five thousand dollar pay. Oh, that's what he wants to pay. Right. Yeah. I was that's thinking of it from another point of view. <laughs> I would imagine that's a wrap up. I believe the answer is yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's the anticipation of the uh, power company providing what we need. Um, <clears throat> I don't think there's any. I don't think there's any issues with that. Yeah, we're anything about that. 
we were, I, I think they were, we were thinking that we're going to need to do a poll petition for, for the select board, but if we move it out of the right of way onto the easement, that, mm -hmm. that, that'll go faster. Verizon keeps coming for poll. I know we can get this number, and I know um, Wayne has said this number in the past, but it would be good to watch and to see how the water rates change over time um, in the town um, to make sure that they're keeping up with the costs. You think? Yeah, I think one of the resources available to them is this Mass Rural Water Association. And I think they'll do a water rate study at no or low cost. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if they've taken advantage of that. I think since I've been here, it's, it'll be six years in July. I think <coughs> water rates have been raised once. Yeah. Prior to that, they hadn't been raised for 20 years. For a, a while, yeah. Uh, so, anyway. And I know Wayne's on that. He can, he can give us the number whenever we want it, but it would be good to see that rate change um, within somewhere within the enterprise fund request process. All right. So, um, we get to the bottom line. yeah. So that would be the amount that the call set. Okay. So that's the amount, um, yeah. $407,023. Any questions on that? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Last would be the capital. Yeah. So I'm not sure whether it, let's do the, we'll get the sheet in that. That, that big large spreadsheet, and then we'll go yeah. to the annual time meeting warrant, which is going to have those articles on it, anyways. Yeah. So we have, uh, we can see what's been absorbed by uh, CPA funds and FLIRF money. Yeah. And I was thinking for the annual town meeting to present the list of all these capital projects and then. Um, shown in a way where people see that some of these projects are being funded for the absolutely absolutely because it's it's quite a short list on the warrant as to how many capital projects we have compared to prior years. So mm -hmm. Here we go. So the first one that's going to be on the warrant would be the, the purchase of the, the hybrid police cruiser. Mm -hmm. um, and that proposed to come on the vehicle stabilization account. And the, the price of that would be $55,000. There's still ongoing discussion between the, the police chief and the select board about whether an all uh, all electric vehicle cruiser yeah. would, be, would be preferred or if possible. Um, it's, on the, it's on their agenda for tomorrow night to discuss. Um, but that's just how we currently have it. Yep. Yeah. Are we able to capitalize the equipment from the old cruiser to put on the new or is most all of this equipment? Most of it's cash for Yeah, as long as it's sort of the same make and model of the of the cruiser. If, if they were to switch to, let's say the switch, they were they were to switch to an all electric sedan, a lot of the stuff that's in the existing cruiser probably wouldn't, wouldn't work. Yeah. Um, so what does the police fleet look like now with the addition of this? What do they what? The fleet, the uh, communications? No, the, the entire how vehicles? How many vehicles do they have? How many or will they keep on the road? So typically what he does is um, the oldest uh, 
cruiser, which is the one they're replacing now, um, moves to the, the detailed vehicle because they currently, so currently they have uh, the unmarked SUV, they have the marked SUV, and then they have a, one of the old sedans, uh, marked sedan. Um, so they would uh, replace the, the frontline vehicle now, the marked uh, SUV would replace the detail sedan, um, and then the new vehicle, the new police cruiser would replace the marked SUV. Um, so they'll maintain running three vehicles. The only one is normally used for detail. The current mark SUV will be used for details only. And again, there's a cruiser charge in administrative pretext that goes to the town without rent. So it's fairly self, it's fairly self-funded to keep that vehicle going. Yep. Okay. okay just, um, the next one we have listed, we have the Water Department Enterprise Fund. They have set aside $5,000. On their retained earnings, mm -hmm. um, and then they are seeking six hundred thousand dollars of their retained earnings uh, for tank cleaning and inspection of the main water tank that's required by Mass DEP. Okay. That's an annual inspection. Um, I want to say it's I so. I think five it's years. Yeah. It's, it's over a period of time. Could be three. It's either three or five years. It's when they have to get the school gathered. Yeah. Have a fun job. All right. So those are in terms of town capital projects that will be on that will be on the water. It's only those. Okay. Uh, but there are other other what I call miscellaneous expenditures that are mm -hmm. Proposed for listing. Uh, the first one is the Senior Center Phase Two Need Study. Um, I went back and forth on costs after having talked with um, the Deerfield Town Administrator. And at the end of the day, um, I think we should go with the lower amount, the three three thousand seven hundred fifty dollars that was originally listed. Um, that's what the South County Senior Center Board of Oversight approved for the study, $15,000, we can pay yeah. a quarter of it. Um, what this is, is uh, they had the senior center uh, survey that went out and they got feedback from all the seniors as to what they would like and whatever the new iteration of the senior center is gonna be, um, what they would want. So we take, typically what happens is you, you take the, the results that you get and you figure out how to translate that into space, right? What you need for a, a facility to make that happen. Um, so that's what this, uh, that's what this uh, phase two would do. It would be funded by, your would pay half, some of them pay a quarter, and we would pay a quarter. Who, who's gonna own this center? I want, I'll tell you, I've been having flashbacks to scams when I first, yep. when I first started here. Um, it's likely going to be a town of Deerfield building. Um, the South County Senior Center is formed through an intermunicipal agreement. So the South County Senior Center doesn't really have legal legal status to own property, right? It's a it's an agreement between the three right. towns to share right. to share services. It's on paper. Um, so. There's a little bit of back and forth of because Deerfield seems to be going forward with building plans that they have in terms of their uh, the current senior center space, the current senior center building, the town offices, the congregational church yeah. that they now own. Yeah. Um, so there's planning that's happening there. I mean, you also, know, from from a Waitley perspective, and you, even a Sunderland perspective, Deerfield's going to end up owning this building. Why aren't we just paying for services? Why are we, why are we in essence paying for a study to design the building that someone else is going to own? So I've been going back and forth on this. 
with with some folks at the airfield. Um, and the point that I made to them was that I don't think Whaley's interested in designing a building that is going to rent, right? A tenant never pays for a landlord no, no. to design and um, build a building, right? Mm -hmm. um, what I think what's being done, I've made very clear to them that we want no part in it. If this is a building feasibility study, we don't want any part of it. Um, if this is strictly a space needs assessment for the South County Senior Center, independent of any building in any town, then it makes sense for the South County Senior Center to figure out as a three town entity, how to best serve the seniors. If it's building specific and it's part of something larger, then I don't think that I don't think the other town should fund it. Um, I agree. Right. So a space needs assessment, in my opinion, should be something that's there's no location decides. They're abstract. This is what we need yeah. to best provide our services, um, best provide services to seniors. And then we take what we need. And then we match, right? We can go to existing buildings and say, well, this is what we need, does this fit? This is what we need, does this fit here? This is what we need, does it fit here? This is what we need, does it fit here? But they're way down the road, I mean, according to what you really said, which is, I mean, it's all, it's a today or yesterday laid out about what they're spending in CPA money and, you know, they, have, they are down the road. <laughs> yeah, they have temporary plans. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the senior center is operating out of the, the church, the parish hall right now. Yeah. And then there's plans that Deerfield to, you know, one or two or, or three year period to, to, to essentially retrofit the con parts of the congregational church to have the senior center there while all these other things are worked out. Yeah. Um, I also make the point to the, I also made the point to the folks of Deerfield that the South County Senior Center as a group is it's a partnership right and it should be operated as such yeah. um, if any town wants to get out of it then they need to go through the proper legal channels to do that which is 12 months notice um you know it's more than 12 months notice because it's two july essentially two july first if 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 it's not going to become a partnership then then people need to use the right channels to essentially fund it, take your ball and go home um, but I, there needs to be, in my opinion, needs to be better communication um, at the Board of Oversight meetings on what Deerfield, on, on what their plans are. Do you recall um, what phase one study cost us? Um, it didn't cost us anything. That's good. Deerfield uh, paid a portion of it, and then we received a grant for the remainder um, through the Franklin and the Regional Council of Governments. So okay. it's a long explanation, but it's been a bone of contention that I've felt. Yeah, it's just, it's, uh, it, so if, if these monies are going to be directed towards programming, and then the programming then is sort of a blueprint for what a structure needs to be or what capital items need to be in there. That makes me feel somewhat better. Any any other thoughts? This is maybe too tangential, but I I was not satisfied by the new I understand the new director has only been in her job for a few months. So setting the needs. I was not satisfied by her response to the question about transportation for Wakeley residents. And I, this is now anecdotal, but I understand from Fran Fortino that she seems to be expecting that the volunteer group Valley, Valley Neighbors will provide transportation. Well, you know, they're set up to occasionally, you know, give a person a ride mm -hmm. to a medical appointment and whatnot, but they are not. They're not set up to become a van service, right. you know. Right. So, so uh, 
that's really, this is not relevant to this particular <coughs> item, but yeah. I, I didn't hear a plan that really anticipates serving a pretty big geographic area and serving <coughs> people who may not be able yeah. to drive. Yeah, right. you know, I think it's just different people. That's what you got to give her credit. She's come across with some numbers for us this year. She's done trying to get. No, no, I understand that. Yeah. She, yeah. So uh, yeah. overall, I'd say they're making progress. And if she continues to make progress, then we'll probably get those answers. That's fair. Thanks yeah, it's one thing I know that that they're working on is at the towards the beginning of the pandemic. It was, uh, Hatfield donated a van to the South County Senior Center. Uh, I know I've seen at least a draft sort of van plan um, as to how it might work. Uh, but I don't think Valley Neighbors is the solution. <laughs> I think um, Grant told her that. <laughs> yeah, it is certainly, and, and it shouldn't be. I mean, yeah. That's all. Uh, no. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, Hey, do we feel comfortable with three three thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars? Yes. Okay. Okay, Brian. Put to your capital walk-in cooler. Yep. Um, you gotta have it. So, um, employee retirement payout. For uh, employees that retire, they are um, for years of work, they are paid um, essentially a day's pay. Um, so that's what the calculation will be when our treasurer collector retires, um, scheduled for sure. sometime after the year. Okay. All right. Next one is police reform expenditures. This is again, this is sort of year two of the training that we need to send our officers to mm -hmm. to uh, become fully certified under the post. It's a requirement, it's most people who I think would consider an unfunded mandate. Um, the state's provided, I don't know, Peanuts for reimbursement, but there's better than the reimbursement that's happened. That's why the account's not fully uh, spent down from the previous appropriation. But um, it's, it's something we have to do when we figure out the police department. Right. Yep. Okay. The next ones are transfers $50,000 to capital, $20,000 to vehicle stabilization. And then seventy thousand to uh, building stabilization. That's what I was told. <laughs> In revenue to reduce the tax rate, two hundred fifty-five thousand okay. dollars. We made this decision. We made most of these decisions at the last meeting, and I think we had a lot of dialogue about them. Um, any questions about any of these? Oops. Okay. Um, so, um, do we have a motion on total expenditures? Make a motion that we okay the total expenditures as listed for capital transfer funds. Okay. So that's second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So give me one second, I'll write up the, <clears throat> the draft email, tell me more. Uh, there's a lot of sort of boilerplate articles that we do every year.
All right, here is the draft form for the annual town meeting. A reminder for folks, it's May 24th, 2022, it's Tuesday at 6 p.m. at the school, elementary school. Um, typically the finance doesn't, the uh, finance committee doesn't recommend these first ones. It's to hear annual reports, it's to authorize the treasurer, borrow money, participation of revenue, article three is contracts, authorize the town to enter the contract with budget services beyond three years. Um, article four, allows the treasurer to open bank accounts. Five, authorizes the town to apply for and accept grants. Um, article six, start with that. So these are spending limits for the town's revolving funds. Uh, revolving fund has its own source of revenue and expenditures come out of that account, directly out of the account for those ones that are listed. Recently, ones that have been increased were uh, recreation. Recreation is mostly sports equipment. The user fees go in and they buy equipment and uniforms, things like that out of it. And then public hearing revolving. Again, that's when an applicant submits an application. Public hearing is required. We have to advertise in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. We have to spend that money and then they reimburse it. We've instituted a new process with the public hearing uh, revolving fund. You might recall at one of these, one of the previous special town meeting, this fund was a deficit. Um, there wasn't a lot of great control over it. And they were uh, essentially invoices were being paid, but there was no corresponding revenue coming in. Um, but that has since uh, we put a stop to that. So these are the same as last year. They're the same. And I, don't you think the uh, it would be a benefit to the town if people knew what were in each one of those counts. You know, we have a spending limit. What's the balance in the accounts? Yep. So we could, we could everyone could see that very plainly. Yeah. You know, I could add that to the, I do that explanation real quick. Yeah. Could add that. That would be good. Amounts in the mm -hmm. accounts. We vote on each one of these separate. Yeah, I think that's what you've done in the past. Yeah. Everyone, we got our day book. Sorry. Okay, so we have to vote on each one of the revolving fund spending limit. Uh, or just the article. Just the article. Yeah, right. Okay, so um, here we have the spending limits here. Fund name. Do I have a motion for Article 6? I make a motion. We accept Article 6 as written. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Article 7, uh, to fix the salaries or compensation of elected officers of the town. Here we have. We see all the positions, and they each got a 3% COLA, which brings up to those amounts. So this is approving, this is approving the, the, the pay rate or the compensation for that position. We're not appropriating money here. The money to pay for these is appropriated in the operating budget, but this just sets the rates essentially. Okay. Article 7, motion. Uh, so we'll move to accept Article 7 as presented. Second. Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Article 8, we already, uh, this, is, this is where the budget for the That's enterprise the budget will go. Yep. Uh, Article 9 is where the operating budget will go. Yep. We previously approved that. Um, proposed financial transfers. We just talked about these. Article 10. Is the two hundred fifty-five thousand to reduce the tax levy? Yep. Um, taking from free cash. Article eleven is to transfer twenty thousand dollars to vehicle stabilization. Twelve 
Article 12 is $50,000 to capital stabilization. Right. And Article 13 is 70000 to the town building stabilization fund. Mm -hmm. So I'll just assume those previous motions are They've good. Or, they've already been recommended. Okay, we're good. Proposed capital project appropriations. This is the purpose of the police cruiser for, I should say, to, to transfer the sum of $55,000 from the vehicle stabilization account uh, to purchase the new police cruiser, which you voted on. Um, Article 15 is the $6,000 from enterprise fund retained earnings for the uh, water tank storage cleaning and inspection. Uh, Article 16 is the $5,000 that the enterprise fund water department um, mm -hmm. sets aside. Um, proposed miscellaneous appropriations. These are the ones that we also just discussed. Article 17 is a 7,500 for retirement benefits. Um, Article 18 is $10,000. Um, this is for police reform. Then you also talk about Article 19. Um, is a South County Senior Center Space Needs Assessment. Article 20 um, is a $8,498 for the Frontier uh, Walking Cooler. CPA Act appropriations. Um, these are uh, allocations that are voted on from anticipated FY23 revenue um, and they're into these specific categories that CPA allows and actually that requires 10% of the of the revenue to be placed into, at least in terms of historic uh, open space and affordable housing. Uh, Money is also placed into the budgeted reserve because uh, it allows the town to spend that money throughout the year. Again, funds um, and all including the, in the explanation of the, the amounts that we have in these different categories. Um, all of these, all of these uh, uh, monies that are put into these accounts need, need to be appropriated at a subsequent time. Um, you notice that um, because we paid off the, the town paid off the, the rest of the debt on the town hall historic rehab project, that 43,000 is now freed up for other projects. Um, this is a long article. Hayneville um, Road. Hayneville Road reconstruction project. So the project's moving forward. So this is to reconstruct Hayneville Road from the Williamsburg line to Weber. Um, um, so it's probably going to come in $10 million, $12 million project. Um, it's being funded over two years with federal highway dollars. Um, I think we've been very fortunate we haven't had to pay really any money um, for the design because uh, Mass DOT has designed the entire project so far. Um, and they're committed to, to doing that. Um, but what this article does is it authorizes the town um, to essentially take permanent or temporary easements that it needs uh, to complete the project. Mm -hmm. There's a, a long list of, of easements um, that are needed. None of them are, are very significant, um, but there is a lot of them. And there's this reference is a plan that will be on file with the town clerk's office. So this essentially authorizes the select, uh, the select board to, to requ uh, acquire the property that's needed. Um, one of the challenges with the project is that some of the land is what was what's considered Article 97 land, and that's pretty much City of Northampton watershed land. Article 97, uh, Article 97 of the it's Article 97 of the Massachusetts Constitution says that land <coughs> land that's acquired for for conservation or watershed water supply purposes requires a two thirds vote of both houses of the legislature to release it to do any other use essentially. Um, so there are, I think there's three different instances where land that, that needs to be acquired is for Article 97 protected. So this also, this all also authorizes the town, uh, 
petition the legislature um, to release that land. And the state currently has what's called a no net loss policy for Article 97 land. We're taking out two acres, we need to put two acres back under Article 97 protection. So we have a couple ideas of, of how we're going to do that. There's some, there's some parcels that we claim that we own through tax ownership that are landlocked. To flip or donate sure. to the state, but we'll have to see. Um, yeah, it goes back to the state, not to the city of Northampton. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, uh, we could still retain ownership of the land if we wanted to, um, but we would need to, to be deed restricted essentially. Yeah. Um, or we could donate it to the. There are the parcels I'm thinking of um, were landlocked when when Interstate 91 went through, um, and they're adjacent. Some of them are adjacent to the, the Great Swamp Wildlife Management Area. Um, so I was, my initial thought was, we get pay, we get essentially a, a payment for state-owned land in town. So if we could essentially donate those parcels of little value to the state, Article 97 would protect them, and then we would also get, you know, some type of revenue from those parcels. Um, it might be worth it, but we'll have to explore that more. They're also peculiar about what quality of the parcel that we give them in terms of environmental value and things like that. We can't give them that can. <laughs> so that's all been mapped out as to uh we'll be starting discussions with EO, EEA about what they would accept. Um, so I think C talks about raising appropriate funds um, essentially to fund the process of land acquisition, right? So that includes um, appraisals, fair market value, uh, payments to landowners if they don't want to donate. The first thing we do is we ask for essentially a donation, a certificate of donation. Right. Uh, most of these are a couple hundred square feet, you know, on the edge of someone's private road. But again, people have a constitutional right to receive just comp compensation for um, any land that's needed. Um, I think this is too early in the process for us to, to, to put any sort of amount on it right. um, because appraisals haven't been done yet. Um, and it, it's just pretty much too early to, I think, and put it, include any amounts here. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's likely going to get struck out. Are you planning to do any um, communication with the, with the property owners on a long stretch of road before the county? Yeah, there's a whole um, that's a good question. Um, there was when they had the public hearing, there was certified letters that went out to each property owner. Um, and they were invited to the hearing and talked about. So there has been some outreach. Um, there's a, a, a process through Mass DOT right away acquisition process that has several preliminary letters. Uh, being sent out. Um, so the property owners that 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 are being impacted have been notified. Um, but I wonder, I'll, I'll have to keep because maybe we should do a sort of informal outreach. Um, and then D is kind of a catch all. Brian, just prior to C, it mentions the town of Wade and town of Hatfield. What's the town of Hatfield yep. connection? So at the right by the reservoir, there is a tiny sliver of land that's the border of Hatfield, Waitley, and Williamsburg. So I think one of the easements that's needed is technically in the town of Hatfield. The land is owned by the city of Northampton. For watershed supply purposes, but it's technically in the town of Hatfield, that's my understanding. Um, a lot of these easements are, um, I would say about half of these easements are on uh, Northampton water supply land. They want obviously a bunch of land out there. Our hope is that to enter into a single agreement with that Northampton will donate those parcels. Mm -hmm. um, I think that would be the right thing for them to do. Um, sure. But get their water for us. Considering they get the water for nothing. Um, 
they've been they've been involved in the process they know what's going on so Keith is going to reach out to them to try to get them to donate. Okay. So if there's no money aspect to this, no, right. um, there's not really a finance committee vote. Right. Um, but I wanted to. Okay. To, to let you know. Sure. Um, if I'm wrong, I mean, actually, it might be good if you, if you, if you would take a vote. Just think. Well, no, I would want to come back with a mouse. I think you'd have to. I would. I take that back. Yeah, but do you still want to just say recommended by the finance committee? Oh, I think so we'll cover it. Unless you, it, it's up to you if you want to. Well, we could, I mean, there are no funds. So we're essentially put, putting our stamp of approval on the process. And we could take a vote. Do we have a motion? I would think we might as well vote on it. Definitely. Okay. <clears throat> Um, so I move that we accept Article 22 as stated. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Just in case. So the following ones are, are really for information purposes. Um, Article 23 is reducing the term of planning board members from five years to three years. I can't wait to get off the planning board, I guess. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Five years is a long time, right? It is a long um, time. And these are proposed zoning bylaw amendments. Uh, these two are adding marijuana courier and marijuana delivery as permissible uses within the town. Article 25, I guess, is another crack at trucking and construction equipment services as a permissible use in the town. Um, they haven't addressed the issue that stopped it a year ago, which was the size of the trucks. <laughs> I had to assess yes. the public That's hearing. A reasonable question. <laughs> the public hearing is going on now. Um, you mean at this moment? It's yeah. So, well, I guess we'll see what comes out of that. But I wanted to include it here. As, in Article 6, is necessary changes to the table of use if those previous articles pass. That is that. Good. Foresee we'll us having to uh, come back to anything in addition for the town meeting. I don't think so. Um, if anything comes up, I'll be sure to reach out if, sure. if anything changes that's sort of beyond our control. Okay. okay. Motion to adjourn. Let's make a motion to adjourn. So, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. 2023 is in the can.